my wonderful artistic friends and welcome to Monet Cafe. Today is a rainy day here and we're talking really rainy. I mean the storms were so bad. I was I usually love painting in the rain but I was actually a little afraid there was so much lightning but now it's calmed down and it's just a perfect day for me to be in my studio and I thought why not have you guys come along with me. Um, I've got my coffee. I love this kind of day so I'm gonna have to do a little um, project that I thought might be fun for you guys. I recently shared on Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook two reference photos. They actually are two of my own photos um, that I took from my backyard, which is right behind my studio here. My backyard is a big field. It's a house we moved in after my other house and studio flooded. But you know what? There's blessings in every storm, or there's a rainbow after every storm. Because even though this house is not what my other house was, uh, I have this beautiful field of cows in the backyard that have become my pets. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a wonderful thing. But the two reference photos are um, very similar um, uh, composition and layout, little differences. So I presented it to our art group for them to say what they thought was a better composition and why or how they would crop it. So I thought I'd go ahead and discuss this and pick one to choose and kind of go through my process of how I take a reference photo and create a composition to work from. And I thought too, if you haven't joined Monet Cafe Art Group, you might want to go ahead and join and uh, check out that post if you can find it. And um, you can also feel free to use the same reference photo if you would like to create your own painting from it because it is my photo. So anyway, let's get started and we're going to have fun. All right, guys, let's do it. Okay, so I first just have, I like to use this technique a lot. I just have a piece of foam board and I've covered it with a piece of newsprint. I use newsprint because it's cheap. <laughs> and uh, I want to be able to use, um, while I will put the, um, my surface today is going to be UART paper. It's 400 grit. If you've been on my channel a lot, um, you know, I focus a lot on pastel painting. And I don't know what, that's where the sticker was. But um, you have to use with pastel, you don't have to, but it's a good idea with pastel painting to use a surface that has a grit to it, okay? I love UART paper. It's an awesome paper. And uh, my composition is going to be a landscape um, view, so it's going to be horizontal in its format. But this allows me to have all of this room around here. I actually, if a pastel is dirty, let me find a dirty one. Here's one that's kind of dirty. Now I'm going to be using this for a sketch, so I don't want to use in here. But um, this, see how it's dirty? I will, before I, see how all that came off there? I will clean it quickly sometimes, and I'm checking colors. Okay, see now I can check that color before I lay it down on the painting. So it's just kind of a, a neat way to clean and check your color, okay, to have your newsprint there. Newsprint is very cheap, okay? So, but what I'm going to do now is go ahead and show you how I work from the reference photos. If I'm making a choice as to what's a better composition, how I go ahead and, and sketch it out or, or make a little thumbnail to see what might be a more interesting composition. So let's do that right now. Okay, now I have my two images here that I presented to our Monet Cafe art group um, to get everybody's ideas. There's not a real right and wrong to this. There are some good compositional rules that I'll talk about. But um, this was the first photo, and this was the second photo. Okay, if you notice, and I'll try to, after I make this video and editing, I'll put a better version so you can see it better than on my iPad. But um, this first photo here... Um, I would not choose it as is because of the composition line, I mean composition line, the horizon line, okay, that's where the, the sky meets the land, okay, horizon line is actually not at the top of the trees, it's where the land is, and actually there's some fields back there, so it's right about, it's just above that cow's back, okay, is where the horizon line is, and that's pretty much center of the photo. The center right here on my iPad is this little button, so I know that, that is, that's really not a good placement for the horizon line. Um, we want the horizon line, I have other videos on this, it's, a, it's called the rule of thirds. It should either be in the lower third or the upper third as a general rule of thumb, okay? Um, so that is why I would not use this as is. However, I love, and people have already pointed this out on Monet Cafe Art Group, I love the sky in this one. The sky is more of the star of the show in this one than it is in this one, okay? But I like the horizon line 
in this one, okay? I like this field coming back. I also, in this one, for some reason, this photo, I can see. I love little things hidden and tucked away that call, draw your eye into it. And I see these distant trees back here. Uh, I'm getting too much into this. <laughs> that I will, uh, I, I like, and I think I would utilize that. Um, but, um, but again, this one here is a great, let me see if it'll let me do this. Yeah, if we, um, if we lowered, see how I just lowered that horizon line just there? Look how much more interesting that sky is. It's just more pleasing. Some of the people in Monet Cafe Art Group have mentioned how we would lose this building. Okay, that's a distraction. It's kind of like a just an ugly piece of metal building thing. I don't even know what it is. But um, anyway, that already makes a better composition when we pull it down, okay, or crop it like that, okay? So, but I am, um, I love skies, and a lot of times I love to focus on a, a sky image, um, but in this case, I think I'm going to go with this one. I like some of the movement and energy coming up in this field, and I like this little um, way I'm able to see these background trees. So I'm going to go with this one right now. Um, the cow's placed pretty good, uh, but I might play around with that a little bit. But that's what the sketch is for, okay? So right now, I'm going to do a little sketch, work on this one right here, and uh, see what we come up with. Okay, so I've zoomed in here a little bit. Actually, this is the size of the painting. I just went ahead and did the size of the painting. But um, just to do a general idea for composition, you don't need to do it the exact size of the painting, okay? I just wanted to give you something for reference. Um, so I've just put in a little idea here of kind of the general um, proportions to this, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's close, okay? Um, I am just using right now a piece of willow charcoal, vine charcoal, it's called V-I-N-E charcoal, and um, it's just a nice little uh, sketchy type of thing you can work with. I often break my charcoal. I've got a small one here and a large one here too, okay? There's various sizes you can get in this, but um, this one should suffice. I don't know, I might use that large one for those trees. But anyway, I know that my, and I always get a little awkward here working around the camera, um, so forgive me if my big old face gets in here. But I know right now, I'm just gonna kinda make some little marks of where things are. I know that that um, horizon line, that's a little too high. Ooh, I think I have a love bug crawling on my arm. Oh my goodness, here in Florida, the love bugs have been crazy! No, I don't. I thought I did. <laughs> okay, so I know the horizon line is kind of in that upper third. Here would be about middle, okay? All right, so I know it's going to be a little bit more up here. I want to give enough room for those trees, okay? So um, so we've got the horizon line kind of coming like right through here, okay? And then I know I've got these trees. I, I can kind of judge, see how much sky I've got here. I do have some sky, so I can't make these trees too awfully big, okay? So we're just going to quickly just sketch out these trees. Um, you're just getting general ideas. The more you do this, the better it gets, or the better you get. <laughs> and um, so we got an idea of the trees. like in my last video I spoke about creating energy in your painting this would be really boring okay um, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna break this I'm always breaking my stuff here all right I'm squinting my eyes and I'm looking and I've got in the foreground here see I've just broken it the foreground here I have a, a little bit more flow and I'm just feeling I'm feeling some energy just kind of uh, moving back here if I made this all just horizontal strokes like this very boring, okay, and I, I kind of like, like I said, I like it to peek back there. That's too dark, but um, anyway, we've got um, some nice movement. See how that's already more interesting than if I had just done grass all across the whole thing? So I want to keep, oh, I got a bump underneath my, my uh, board back there. All right, so we're getting an idea here. Energy coming back, nice trees. Then we got these nice clouds with some, um, some shadows underneath them. Some of those uh, clouds are like a kind of a medium to darker value underneath some of those clouds, okay? So, general composition, third here. Little break in the trees to keep interest back here. I'm going to lighten that up. We've got our cow that's too big. <laughs> to get the idea. Um, and create just some interest and energy and movement. Again, I'm going to kind of pull the eye in with my my composition and my strokes, okay? So I can see that I'm, I'm gonna like that, okay? That's pretty good. 
Okay, so now it's time to choose my color palette. And the great thing about doing this is now I can see that I don't really like um, the cow. You know, he's um, kind of got his hip going up here. And then this tree right here, that's just too much um, right there. To me, it feels too weighted there. He needs to be more where there's a, um, a space in the tree. So the good thing is um, this is a little bit more narrow in composition or proportion to this one. So I'm going to be able to maneuver the bigger tree here and maybe the cow a little bit more in the center of that valley of the trees there. So that's why you do these though, so that you can uh, analyze those things before you start, before you commit to something. So it's a great idea to do an initial sketch. All right, so now to get started in choosing our color palette. And I want to introduce you, if you haven't already met, a good friend of ours. It's the pocket color wheel, okay? It's a great way for you to learn more about color. Learn, it has so much information on it, teaching you really about um, how to organize your color palette. Um, I have another video that goes into detail on that. But um, I also wanted to recommend um, that you try doing the same little sketch, kind of like I've done here, uh, like four times, and just do it with a monochromatic um, color scheme, okay? So for example, uh, this blue right here, it already lays out three, actually four if you count that color there, values of blue. Values of violet, red, violet, red. So in other words, you would just use these colors to paint this painting. It's a really great lesson on value and it's just going to make your um, painting stronger and um, it'll make it more natural when you go to choose your own color palette. So you know what, I think I'll just do that right now with this one. I'll do a monochromatic, maybe blue um, color palette on this to give you the idea. Now I've got these four different values of blue. They're not exactly like the blues on here, but this will be a perfect example of how value is king and not necessarily color. But it's okay because these are going to be um, four different values. If you were to take a black and white picture of this, you would easily see that this is light to dark, okay? Well, these are easy, but sometimes these middle ones are a little trickier, okay? So um, this one's actually kind of close to that one right now, but for this purpose, this is just fine. All right, so I'm gonna get started and just use these four colors. Now I've got my color wheel all dirty <laughs> to paint this painting, okay? I need to pull up my reference image again. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Squint your eyes. What is the lightest thing in this? It is the sky. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly get in the sky. The sky is typically lighter at the horizon line and darker up towards the heavens okay so we got our light sky this because it's a little bit darker than that one might be nice to, and this is newsprint okay so I'm not gonna get a lot of layering effect here but uh, you know in the painting I'll add a little bit more of those clouds but um, or, and I'll probably keep them very impressionistic in this case I don't want the sky to compete with what I'm trying to do in the grasses okay so we've got a little bit of our lighter values in the sky. Now, what is the darkest thing in this? Of course, it's these trees here. And so I've just got this darker blue. Actually, I could go darker than that, but this will work for now, okay? So we're getting this nice blue scheme going here. Scheme, I don't like that word. <laughs> scheme sounds like a plot or <laughs> planning something bad. Let's say a nice um, palette. You know, that's better, okay. So now we've got our, our darker blue trees in there, okay? Now, these background trees, the ones I was talking about before, are going to be the ones that are in the distance. Again, it's hard for me to work around this camera, so I'm going to come over here. So we're going to have these distant trees, that's a little big, um, back here, kind of pulling the eye back there, like, oh, what's back there, okay? And again, I had talked about maybe punching in or dotting in a few of these that maybe are peeking through right there of distant field, okay? So now that is going to be the um, kind of middle value there, all right? Now I like to always lay down, almost always, lay down the darker layers first and I know this foreground, values get darker um, in the foreground and uh, lighter in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down some dark. It looks too dark right now, which it is too dark, but I know that I'm going to lay down more on top of it. And again, I don't have a lot of um, value, um, I mean a lot of layering ability with this because this is newsprint. Sanded paper would allow you to 
get a lot more in there, okay? So now I know that cow is dark, but I'm gonna lay down a dark, again, this is hard for me. Um, I'm gonna lay down a dark and then I'll lighten them up a little bit. I got them too big again, but that's okay for this. Okay, so we got our cow. And um, now his back's got a little bit of a, this is the medium one, a little bit of a highlight on it, okay? I just got a cramp in my foot. Ow! Oh! <laughs> Man, the joys of painting. All right, so, and he's got a little bit of a highlight on his head coming down here like that. Let me add a little bit more to his head. Like these chunky pastels sometimes are a challenge, you know? <laughs> so he's not the perfect cow. But, um, all right, now we've got back here, we've got this field that's going to lighten up as it gets back in here and it meanders back. And you always want to consider, where is that sun? Now, from the reference photo, you can see the sun is coming this way, okay? So the highlights of the trees are going to be on this side of the trees. And you may get, yeah, the, the field is a little light back there, so it is kind of on top of it, not behind it. But um, this right here, this little lighter value here is what's going to give you that illusion that things are further away. Now, the grasses are lighter than the cow, okay? So... Work that around him, and um, there's a little bit of light kind of coming down on this here. And again, in the painting, I'm going to create a try to create a sense of energy and leading the eye back there. Okay. Um, now, if I was to add more colors in this, what I'm going to plan on doing in the um, actual painting is um, making some of these background things in the distance. If you add a little bit of a Oh, I don't know, like a punch of a color back here. You're going to really create an interest back here to draw the eye. This one's going to be a little dark, but I'm going to lighten it up. Now, I'm going out of my monochromatic um, color palette right here. But this is enough different to where it's going to create that interest back there, okay? And um, also purples are good sometimes for distant things because colors um, kind of cool out in the background. But in this case, I just thought that little bit of uh, green... Uh, teal color would look good okay all right and then always you want to kind of introduce a color in to make the painting more consistent so now you're seeing how we get a little bit of a, a fun idea of how the painting is going to look with a monochromatic scheme then I would probably add some of this color in the cow you know and get that kind of going and um, there are going to be some highlights on that tree as well or these trees here so you could use, I've already lost all my colors here, you could use um, maybe like some, uh, well these would be good for the shadows of the trees. Down towards the bases, when there's little shadowy areas, purples are good for that. And introduce some in here too, to create that sense of mood and depth. Probably a little bit of this purple in the cow. These are way too big to be drawing that cow. Um, and then, just to get that little field back there, even a little bit lighter maybe, right back in here. To pull your eye back there a little bit. All right, so you see we're already getting a little bit of something going there, so you get an idea of how um, value is going to really create the interest in your painting. Now this, like I said, was more of a monochromatic or actually, when you have them right next to each other like that, it's called an analogous color scheme or color palette. Um, when you have colors that are close or next to each other on the color wheel. So this would be more of an analogous instead of just monochromatic, okay? I did throw in a little bit of that teal green, okay? So, um, so it's close to that. But anyway, you get an idea of... Uh, Actually, I could make these purple back there, and that I think would probably be better than that green. But this is not about this little sketch. It's going to be about the big painting, all right? So we got a good idea of how color works, but I now am going to work more on local color for this instead of um, coming up with my own color palette, just for the purposes of this example. So local color means what's natural to the scene, what is in the scene already. That doesn't mean I'm not going to put down some other colors on top to be darker or give more impact, but the general feel of the painting will be a little bit more of that sunny day with a green field and um, a little bit more like what it already is. All right, let's get started.
Here is my chosen color palette and uh, I went ahead and kept the same monochromatic blues that I used um, for the example and uh, a couple of the purples here. Um, but I have actually added, well these are you know more of the local colors that are in the scene. There's the green grasses, I have varying values and just so you know I have the values from dark to light, bottom to top, okay, in each um, family, color family. Um, this green right here is kind of a in between these two. <laughs> um, also notice that I'm I'm learning the the um, the value not not I don't mean light or darkness but the benefit of using neutral colors in your work instead of just all bold colors because what it does is if you use all bold colors nothing stands out it's all kind of everything shouting at the same time but if you use neutrals um, and then you use the bold colors more for accents and things it's going to make your painting more exciting some of the neutrals in this case is this is a neutral just means it's it's not high chroma or intensity um, in this case this one's going to be more of a neutral here this is kind of a neutral in here okay these are these are intense okay like um, like these here all right um, more intense in color this one's more of a neutral here even this one a little bit you know this one's kind of like grayed down or whatever but they don't have the the intense color you know this one is not a neutral all right I'm sorry for the focus um, so you get the idea now the reason for these oranges okay without these you know, it's kind of bland isn't it plus um, we know that complementary colors or from some of my other videos I've shared complementary colors um, are just gonna really make these greens show up and uh, I like the way Karen Margulis puts it, is to lay down some dirt. <laughs> I may even need a value darker than this. So in that field, we need to lay down some dirt before we put the greens on top of it, okay? So um, so that's my reasoning for these. Um, I'm going to try to stay pretty close to these just to keep this simple. I want this to be more of a lesson than, you know, just about, I hope it turns out to be great painting, <laughs> but it's more of a lesson, okay? So let's get started. All right, I'm going to put my UART paper up here and just so you know my little system I just use blue painters tape some people say it distracts them but the, the color but it doesn't bother me at all um, but I just tape two pieces along the back of my uh, painting this makes it I used to tape all the way around the painting in the front of it but I saw artist Rita Kirkman do this and uh, I was like man that is just such a a, a nice little art hack <laughs> I used to didn't know what the word hack meant like that my kids told me that little little tips and tricks that make life easier is what a hack is so anyway I'm gonna get this up here now it doesn't have to be perfect and my my UART paper is a little warped um, you don't have to turn these down but I just didn't want them sticking up um, but uh, I have a actually another little video where I share how to unwarp your UART paper if you have high humidity I might take these sides down too, that's going to bother me. If you have high humidity, sometimes this paper can warp up and um, you can basically just use an iron and iron it out. So check that video out too. Now I'm just doing a sketch right here and I'm doing a voiceover because I decided to speed it up because you kind of just saw that in the little sketch. So again, I'm using the vine charcoal and this is to be just very basic. You don't want to get super, super detailed in this. The vine charcoal is great because I can just again lay it on its side and uh, again I'm just establishing values right here. Uh, this isn't going to be anything too um, specific uh, but it's just to kind of get an idea and a, a game plan of where uh, things are going to be. That's all I really needed for that vine charcoal was just kind of get where that horizon line is and where the uh, the trees are. Now this is what I was talking about with the complementary underpainting. I you know, sometimes I have people ask me, what makes you decide on whether you do an alcohol wash, whether you do a complementary underpainting, whether you work on one solid color. Sometimes it's just based on how I feel the scene should look or how I want it to come out. And that just comes with, I still can get better at all these things too, but that, look at the back of my head, that still comes with, uh, I mean, that just comes with lots of practice. I need more practice too. Oh, and just so you know, I'll give you a little, uh, a little, um, what do you call it? foreshadowing here. Uh, that cow, I end up losing it in the end. I felt uh, he kept progressively getting larger. The size there is pretty good. He actually could be a little smaller there. But um, as I went on and went on, he kept getting bigger and bigger. And, and then I was like, let me just erase him out and start over. And when I erased him, my eye just went into the painting so much better. So sorry, cow, you had to go. But at least I have him in my field to look at. <laughs> 
Now I was just pointing out there how that uh, the back tree line there, I had it yellow, that was way too light in value. Those trees in the back, even though they're going to be lighter in value than the foreground trees, the yellow was too light. It was too much of a shade too light. Here you'll see I have my handy dandy pipe foam insulation that can be purchased at any hardware store. And uh, I just have a little piece that I cut off. I didn't even have to buy it. My husband had some in the garage, <laughs> but I've had it for years. It lasts forever. But um, I, I work on the sky first because it's light. And then I start working on the darker values. And you might not be able to see it here, but I actually, I clean it on that newsprint that's beside my painting after using darker colors so I don't, you know, contaminate it into the lighter colors, unless I want to blend it, as in that case, I'm kind of blending those uh, gradation of values into the background. So uh, it works real good for blending, and you kind of want to blend your underneath layers um, if you want it to be more of an impressionistic look underneath. I'm getting more values down with pastels now in those trees. I know they look really dark, almost black there. It's actually not black. These are really dark greens and dark purples. And they do appear as black, though, um, because the scene, it's the darkest value in the scene. So just, you know, kind of getting those in, shaping those trees up. Notice I have some variety in the trees. I don't have them like a roller coaster. Um, they have uh, a little bit of different shapes and, and heights and sizes. That's real important um, to getting it uh, just more artistic. I obviously need to darken up those background um, trees a little bit more. You see how that helped? They were still too light. So, you know, you spend a lot of time early on in the painting just getting your values right. Now, I need to pull up that reference photo now so that you can kind of compare it uh, to what I'm doing. As you can see from the reference image, there is still a lot of value in the sky. If you squint your eye, uh, the underneath clouds, uh, way back at that distant horizon, that's all still pretty dark. The lightest part is up at the top. Um, a lot of times I speak of typically you've got your lighter clouds uh, just over the horizon or the tree line. And, but sometimes with storms, that's not the case, which it's not in this case. I still end up keeping it a little lighter, um, but uh, not as light as I normally would down by the uh, horizon or the tree line. Now I'm going to keep painting here for a bit and uh, actually um, just play some music for you to enjoy. I have a lot of people ask um, about doing most of the video real time and while I would love that, <laughs> there's a couple of reasons I don't do that. One is it takes um, a lot of time, a lot of space on my computer. Um, I end up erasing the files when I'm done, but just to upload the uh, videos uh, on the YouTube channel it takes a long time and where I'm living right now uh, since our home and my studio flooded we're out a little bit more in the country you know hence the cows in the field <laughs> so we don't get we have very bad Wi-Fi um, our internet service oh you don't want to hear that saga getting a dish system some people who lied to us and now we're stuck in a contract and that's a whole nother video and I'm not going to even share that <laughs> but anyway so that's why sometimes you know I am a little limited in um, in how long I can make these videos they would take forever to upload but um, you kind of see I'm getting down um, some of the the hue now uh, not just the values I'm still working with value but just adding color to it uh, and uh, trying to still make it uh, very um, colorful and bright but again I'm learning to focus more on some of the neutral colors um, than just all bright and bold notice how I'm still keeping my strokes really loose almost scribbly um, but to keep that energy like I talked about in my last video and movement and looseness to it. You want to keep it very loose. You don't want to tighten things up right now. Oh, hi hair. <laughs> I gotta keep my head out of there. Anyway, so um, did I say I was gonna put on some music and let you guys watch? Let me do that now. Bye, I'll be back soon.
Here is where I actually add some Blair Low Odor Fixative. I need to pull it back more when I hold things up there so they're in focus. But I add it often to the front of the, or the foreground of the painting just to kind of darken it up and give it an extra layer. I still had more layering ability here, but I kind of wanted to get that impressionistic look. I only use fixative for the working process of a painting. See how it darkened the foreground and it gave me those little splotches, kind of gives an impressionistic look, but also notice how I covered up the painting when I sprayed it. So I let that dry and uh, then I've got a little bit more of a uh, gritted, gritty surface on the front there um, to add more grasses. It's looking really dark right now, uh, but I'm just establishing those darks again and uh, you'll see later I start adding the lighter uh, colors on top or values and colors on top of that.
here is the point where I realize this darn cow keeps getting bigger and bigger. He looks like a buffalo at this point. <laughs> and it just doesn't work right with the perspective of the uh, painting. I actually tried to do a quick sketch of him. That's actually a good idea to do if you have a little teeny um, image you're doing. I just uh, I blew it up on my iPad. I did a sketch to get his gesture, the gestural quality. And you know, once I brush it out, I was determined to get that cow the right size. And if I thought it was worth it, I would have kept working at it. But once I got him erased and I stepped back again, by the way, step back a lot when you're working on your painting. I looked at it and I was, see this, I X'd him out. Bye bye, cow. It just, I don't know, that feel just said so much without the cow. He was a distraction to me. So that's why I decided to lose him. But I think it worked out um, to the advantage of the painting.